try to um, so we can open this filezilla cissql.moraine ccc.edu So let me go and I will download that PHP file. Substitute the new jQuery mobile stuff, maybe. Then I will upload it again. It's kind of a pain to do it this way. But it is realistic because what we're doing is we are making our change locally and then we're uploading it to the server. So I'll go there and upload. And now if we look at this, we'll see. jQuery functionality. Well, again, if we look at this, notice that by virtue of me making this a data role of header, that's what tells it to like stick at the top of the page. All right. Likewise, by me identifying that as the data role of footer, tells it to stick to the bottom of the page. So my header and footer, all right, by virtue of having this data role associated with them, that's what makes them act, or that's what makes them get applied to it, the jQuery mobile stuff. So if I were to get rid of this, J, uh, the, the data role of footer, if I eliminate that and save it, and then upload the file again, doesn't work. Oh, yes, it does. I stand corrected. There may be something else that's doing that as well. Let's get rid of the header part as well. So let's go and upload that. Notice that it didn't treat it like the header like it did before. It's simply a H1. So if I go here, oh, I didn't change that page, so it's not going to matter. But you see, you can see the difference. It didn't treat it like a header, and it didn't get the, the styling for that. 
And if I were to scroll, it would scroll off the page like um, that tag normally would. So it's those data roles which assign the jQuery mobile behavior to those things. So two of the jQuery uh, roles for data roles are header and footer. There's a data role for content. Ah, this is why it didn't didn't uh, didn't uh, have a problem. This also has a data role of footer and a data position of fixed. All right. So if I were to get rid of this and save it, then my navigation would not stick to the bottom. All right. See, that was not on the bottom because I did not define it as a footer. So if I go in and undo that, save it, and re-upload it, I'll get my footer functionality right back. So now it's stuck to the bottom. All right. Let's try to see what other things that we have. In addition to the role, we have a data position, and we defined it as fixed. And we have a data theme. The themes we're going to come back to later on. All right, we're going to forget the themes for now. So in my example, I'm going to ignore the themes from here on in. Let's go to the, uh, the documentation and look to see what our data attributes can be. All right, and it shows you which of these things can apply for <laughs> for um, which section. So I can make a footer by saying data role equals footer, and data position I can define as fixed if I want. So that's my choices for the footer. I can make it fixed or not fixed. All right. Now, let's look at some of these other things. Navbar. All right. A data role of navbar. What does that mean? Well, a data a navbar is a number of LIs wrapped in a container with a data role of navbar. All right. So what I can do with this is I can associate an icon with the links. And if we look at this, we'll see that for each of the links, I associate an icon. So I associate an icon of info for the index, an icon of star for the find event, and an icon of grid for the target. So here's a list of all the things that I can have for this. I'm going to change the index to have an icon of home, and we'll see the difference. So I'll save it and upload it. Now if we look at it, notice that it previously had the I for info. If I refresh it, it has a little house for home. So again, these data attributes are what hook this to the jQuery functionality as far as appearance and as far as um, behavior. So for these links, I have, again, I can associate icons with them. If I remove that icon, guess what? It just has a normal icon. It doesn't have.
or it just has a normal text. It won't have an icon. So I got rid of that last one, and there we go. That last one doesn't have an icon associated with it. Let's see what more fun that we can have. And again, by all means, I encourage you to play with this stuff. That's where you're really going to learn how to do things, is by going in and playing with, uh, with the, the, the different items. So let's see what other possibilities we have. I could put in for some of these a data roll of button and I could do things like give it a shadow or give it corners or whatever. So let's go and let's do this. Let's set the data corners attribute for the navigation. <coughs> so I can go for this link oops, and give it a data role of button and then I can say and set some of these other attributes. So for example I could say data corners false. Yeah. How do you know where to position the data roll in the data corners? Does it, is there a set uh, position within the list line that you have to mm -hmm. set? It? It's like any other HTML attribute. The sequence of the attributes don't really matter. Okay. Now, what roles and what other things go with those roles, that matters. That's what you get from the documentation. So for example, in this case, I can only set the corners on something I define as having a data role of a button. So you define the data role, then you can define the other characteristics of it. And if we look at this, yeah, it doesn't look drastically different. I, I think you had an equal sign where you wanted a dash. I think you're right. I think you're right. It still lets them look different. Let's set it to true. See what happens. a difference. It's possible that some of these things are interfering with each other and that's why we're not getting that. Let's go on to some of the other things. <coughs> Let's do a transition. Let's set this transition <coughs> to equal fade.
just go and put him on the others. Oh, if, yeah, you're right. Put on the targets one. Let's click on that. And again, it's kind of hard to tell, but let's do a slide instead. Let's see, maybe that will be more obvious. Data transition, slide up. Hard to tell, but you it is. See it's, really fast. Yeah, it's very fast, and it's sliding up there. All right. The point of this is that what these are, these are the hooks. This is what we use to link our elements within our web page to some certain default behavior and certain default appearances within the jQuery mobile. We use these data dash attributes and that gives us certain behavior and certain appearances. Let's look at another page. Let's look at this Tartans page. All right. And let me download the Tartans page. Maybe we can play with that one. Probably more fun stuff on this one than there was on the home page. All right. Again, we have links that we associate an icon for. We have a header that we've associated a data position of fixed for. We have another link that we're defining as a button and giving a data icon of a plus. And we're assigning it UI-BTN right. All right. That again is a style that is built in. It's a class that's built into the jQuery mobile. So that's another way we can hook into that sort of feature. Now, yeah, go ahead. Uh, could you could you put all those uh, data roles in an external file, or no? They have to be embedded like that because it seems like if you were dealing with a lot of them, then you would start to get kind of cluttered out. What what are you thinking of putting in an external file? I don't know, like all the like like. I mean, it's possible for you to have like a lot of different data roles, right? For a certain for a certain Certainly. Yeah. Right. So you have to jam all those in, like, in the actual. Um, they they are attributes on the HTML tag. They have to be okay. Uh, they they have to be attributes associated with the HTML tag. Um, there probably is no better way than than what we're doing here. Okay. Now that being said, if we had something that was consistent on our site, we could put that in That's an include file. We could put, yeah, we could put that chunk of HTML in an include file if we had something consistent. Yes. That was kind of my question. Yeah. Because I noticed at the top, mm -hmm. you only added the newest version of jQuery mobile to the first page. Could you put that as an include? Yeah, you something? could put that as an include file. Okay. And then you'd only have to change it in one okay. place. Yeah. Keep in mind that this book, I don't think, I, I think I go a little bit more in detail about uh, PHP code than the book does. So I think they kind of avoid writing any PHP at all. Uh, I don't remember seeing a lot of PHP in it. And of the stuff that they do, they don't really emphasize the good things like, like PHP include files. If you're going to learn, if you're going to take a minute to learn PHP, take two minutes to learn include files, all right, because they're just so powerful uh, as far as maintaining the site. 
So, again, notice if we look at this, our button that says to create actually has, is a button and it has an icon associated with it of the plus and UI button right, that puts it to the right of the screen. And we could probably play around and try some of those other things maybe. Let's go in and let's set to on the button to data shadow, let's say, or data corners. We'll set to false. data corners are. I can't, I can't notice the difference between these. So either I'm typing something in wrong or I don't know, maybe maybe I don't, I don't have an answer. I'm messing something up. Alright, the list view. Notice the list view has a filter on it. What does that allow us to do? That allows us to filter the items in our list. So if I am interested in any Barclay cartons. As I type, oops, as I type, it filters that down to there. Now there's no coding that I put in there. It gets this functionality, which is a combination of appearance and behavior solely on the basis of, by virtue of me defining that this I can filter. So you notice my list, I have data filter equals true. What that does is that will make this a filterable data list. It will throw up that filter box on the top and it will give you that piece of functionality to go in and filter it. If I get rid of this, data filter equals true, then no filter box, I can't filter it at all. Alright, I no way to filter it, I have to scroll through all of them. So, I get that functionality simply by putting in this data filter equals true. Our first step in learning this and using this is going to be getting used to reading this documentation. This shows the different attributes that you can associate depending on the different list view. So, for example, here, an unordered list with a data uh, list of, or with a data row rather of list view, you can make it filterable. Yes or no? And the bold is default. The bold is the default, right. There's a nice thing that this doesn't use, but you can make a container have a, a, a container that is data role collapsible set. So let's try this. I'm going to put in the content, no, I'm going to put here. Go tack 
another div down here before the and ul. See what this will do for us. Hmm. I must be using that wrong as well. Does clicking on collapsible set take you to the explanation of it? Yeah, clicking on collapsible set. Data. Uh, I have to I have to define these. I have to define each li as collapsible. Okay. That was kind of like my point, like what I was trying to do before. Like, like if every single like tag that you have has to have the data like the, the data set in it, right? Like you can't just set every single you know li gets these data sets and put that somewhere, right? No. Well. Let's think that through. The question is, is, is if I want to make these things collapsible, if I want to make uh, something collapsible, I'd have to put collapsible on every single one. Right. Yes, you would. But what if you were retrieving a list of items that you want to be collapsible from a database? Then you're not hand coding 200 different tartans. You're hand coding a PHP script that retrieves from the database a list of all the tartans and generates the HTML. So, yes, you do have to put it in, but if you're really talking about large amounts of stuff, you can mitigate that by um, putting in, um, putting in um, yeah, some PHP code to go and do that. that. So, yeah, I was, using, I was using the collapsible arm. Let's go in. Let's go and create a little dummy collapsible thing. Go and do this. Look how well that works. Did you see it? You didn't take the div out of the Obviously, I did something wrong, so that's a possibility. <laughs> 